Hi, this is Holly at the Art Hub, and I'm an elementary art teacher, and I found that this is a good lesson to do in kindergarten. If you have a, a child at home who's in preschool or kindergarten, this is a great drawing for them to practice using basic geometric shapes, putting it all together to make a fun drawing of a teddy bear. We'll also include some ideas of overlapping and texture, and they'll end up with a nice drawing at the end. The only thing they're going to need is just a number two pencil. Make sure it has a good eraser. They will be doing some erasing as part of the drawing. Or you could just use a pink pearl eraser um, as an extra um, erasing tool if the pencil doesn't have a good one. So before we start drawing the teddy bear, we're just going to kind of look at what the idea of overlapping is. Here we have a lemon and an apple. And if we just set them side by side, you can see both of them entirely. No parts of them are covered. However, if I were to put the apple in front of the lemon, now you cannot see the whole lemon. We can't see the bottom part down here that's covered by the apple because the apple's in front. We could say that the apple is over the lemon, so the apple is overlapping. The same idea works if I were to put the apple behind the lemon. Now, I can only see the top of the apple. I can't see the bottom because the lemon is in front. You could say the lemon is over the apple and it's overlapping, so we can't see the whole apple. We'll be using this idea in some parts of our drawing today. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, we can just use a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. A uh, computer printer paper would work fine. And what we're going to do is, towards the top of the paper, we're going to draw a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, just the best circle we can make. And we're going to draw that about the size of a pancake or a waffle. I always find that it's easier for kids to draw things big if you give them an idea of how big it should be. So we're going to draw it about the size of a pancake or about the size of a waffle. And I'll give you a second to get your circle how you like it towards the top of your page. And if you need to pause it at any point to slow me down, please do so that they don't get frustrated. The next thing we're going to do is to draw the body of the teddy bear. Starting at the bottom of the circle, we're going to make a long letter U. It's like we're making an oval, except we're stopping when we hit the circle because the circle is on top of the rest of the oval. We're going to make it look like the teddy bear is sitting up, so we'll be drawing the feet down here. So it looks like we're just seeing the front of the feet. Now this time is where we're using the idea of overlapping. We put this oval or circle on top of the oval tummy, and so now we have this extra line here. Because this is on top, we shouldn't be able to see this anymore. So we're going to erase this part of the drawing that little curved line that's inside of the circle. We'll do the same thing over here, drawing these circle feet. We're kind of drawing them tilted just a tiny bit. And we've overlapped again where the oval should be on top. This line really shouldn't be there, so we'll we're gonna take a minute to erase that line out of the middle of that oval. Okay, so now we have the teddy bear's head, belly, and two feet, and we can start adding details. We're going to come on top of the teddy bear's head, not in the middle, not over here at the sides. If we would put the ears here, it would look more like a monkey. We're going to put the curved line up here towards the side, and it's a curving frown line. We'll stop when we hit the circle of the teddy bear's head. We'll do the same thing over here curved line going down like a frown, and we'll double that up again on both sides to add the center of the teddy bear's ear. We're going to make what we call a muzzle. A teddy bear actually has a part that sticks up off of its face and the nose rests on the muzzle. And if you have time later, maybe you can look at a picture of a real bear or grab a teddy bear and see if that's true. There is a muzzle area, just like a dog would have or a cat would have, and that just sticks up off of the face. So we're going to draw a sideways oval. It's a little bit bigger than an egg, towards the bottom of the teddy bear's circle head. We're going to do some overlapping again. 
we're going to put an oval rusting a little bit above that oval. So it's like we did a frown line going down and then we're going to continue that oval shape. And this line should not be able to be seen because the oval is actually on top of the muzzle. So we're going to erase that line out of the middle. Now we'll just brush away our eraser um, marks. Okay, so we've got the nose and the muzzle. The next thing we're going to do is to draw the teddy bear's eyes. It's up to you how big you'd like to make them. I like to kind of keep mine small. And we're going to do those kind of as ovals also. I'm going to go ahead and color mine in with my pencil. If you plan on coloring this later with colored pencils or crowns, you can wait to do that part later. This teddy bear um, is missing one part, and I bet you know what part it is. It's the arms. We're going to go ahead and draw the arms in as our last detail, and then we'll add some pieces to really make it look neat. So over here at the side of the circle, we're going to draw a curving line coming sideways. And we're going to stop when we hit the circle foot. And we're going to pretend the rest of his paw kind of underlaps behind the oval. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, a curved line. This time it's going a different direction. We're following the curved line of the belly. It's almost like we're drawing a backwards letter C curve and we'll stop when we hit the foot. And we could draw a couple lines in there, maybe just one or two, since we're seeing the side of his, his paw, and that just gives an extra detail. We're gonna pretend this teddy bear's been played with for a long time, he's been well-loved, so he's had to be sewn up a few times. So we're gonna show some stitching. Those are the marks that you make when you sew something together. We're gonna do a line down the middle of the oval belly area. And we're going to do some lines coming across, maybe one and then two, so that it looks like sewing marks or stitches. We can also go ahead and add a patch. We're going to pretend that maybe he had a hole, his heart was so full of love from being played with that they had to put a patch over his heart. And we're going to add a little square. It's a good time to practice using a square shape. And we can do our stitching marks again, maybe two and then one. And it's kind of up to you how you want to place those so that it looks like it's been sewn on. We're going to go ahead and add the pads of his foot, the very bottom of his, his feet. So we're going to add a smaller oval inside of both. And we're going to show that those have been sewn on as well. So we'll go ahead and do our stitching marks just using little straight lines. Good practice with different types of lines and different types of shapes. And we've also learned overlapping. Okay, we're also going to show a little bit of stitching on the head. Remember, he's an old teddy bear and he's been played with for a long time, so he's had to be sewn up a few times. We'll do a small square up here on the forehead. And again, with our stitching marks, practicing those straight lines. We're going to do two more parts um, before we call our teddy bear finished. And then if you want to color him on your own with your best coloring, this will make a really nice picture to hang on the refrigerator. We're going to put some texture lines, and that just shows the way that something feels. If I were to touch this apple, it would be nice and smooth because it doesn't have fur. It doesn't have anything pointy on it. It's just nice and smooth on the surface. If you were to fill your hair, you could feel the hair because the hair has texture. You know if you hug a teddy bear, it would be nice and soft and furry. We're going to show that the teddy bear has fur by adding texture. So we're going to add some little lines here at the side. And those lines are about the size of your pinky fingernail if you're confused how big to make those. We're going to do that all the way around both arms. And if you need to slow me down, just have your mom or dad pause it so that you can get caught up. We'll also do some fur marks on the sides of the stomach. And those are just little straight lines that are coming off the sides of our drawings to show the fur. We'll do the same thing around the feet. Just take your time and have fun with it. The more details we add, the better something looks, more interesting to look at, and the more real it looks. We 
just working to get the rest of the fur around the feet. But it's really starting to look good. Do the same thing to the rest of the belly. And then we'll just come up here on top of the ears. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can see what that looks like. We'll do that on both ears at the sides of the head. At the top of the head. And we can do a little bit down here at the bottom. And that's a pretty good looking teddy bear. The last thing we'll do is to make a blanket for him to sit on. We'll just make it look like he's sitting on your bed. So we're going to do um, from the edge of the paper, wherever the edge of your paper may be, we're going to start by making a frowning curved line and we'll stop when we hit the teddy bear. We're going to pretend it's underlapping behind him, that the teddy bear is in front of the blanket just like the apple was in front of the lemon. We're going to pretend that curved line comes down. We're going to see part of the bedspread kind of wrinkle here and I'll move that up so that you can see it. And then we'll do another frowning curved line from the other side of the teddy bear and we'll stop when we hit the edge of the paper. If you wanted to decorate your bedspread or your blanket, you could add some little pattern in there and a pattern is just a shape or line that repeats itself. I'm just going to add a few little polka dots on my blanket and that'll just be an extra detail that I could color later. I hope you've enjoyed drawing this teddy bear with me. I bet your mom and dad will be proud when you show them this picture. And I think we've learned a lot today using shapes and lines, texture and overlapping. Thanks for joining.